I am a horsewoman. I come from an equestrian background, so I was very interested. We've done a lot of different kinds of projects for many different kinds of organizations, nonprofit, for-profit, small businesses, large businesses, but this was definitely something different. And through a process of getting to know one another and evaluating whether there was a good fit, we decided in the college and in the marketing department to go ahead and, and make this the centerpiece project for 50 students this semester in our course. Based on these two customer uh, segmentations, we've come up with harness the passion, be part of the tradition. And this kind of carries some weight because harness the passion, it, there's a passion in harness racing. It's, it's something that people love. It's something that's in, a, in Ohio's blood, which is kind of why we put it in Ohio. And if you kind of look behind that, we put harness racing, passion, skill, everything that we think encompasses that brand. Hopefully something along the lines of ha them owning a share of a horse, like a sorority or a fraternity owning a share of a horse. Um, this also allows OHHA and USTA and other harness racing races to interact with student organization committees. So first of all would be to create a new web destination. This would be different than the initial OHHA website. It would be a more consolidated version with uh, simple pictures and connected to the app that I will talk about and Facebook as well. It will have promotional campaigns on it and uh, vivid pictures and be more engaging. And it will be harnessthepassion.com. Um, work with a web designer in creating this. It will have clean uh, pages and tabs that you can get to. and. Initially, we want to start this up at before the live races begin or very short afterwards. What are some of the bright spots in the sport of harness racing that we can build on? Um, right now, it's just getting that student involvement, uh, making it young, making it Ohio. Um, something that's really big right now is locality and just making people are doing a lot of local things, eating local food, so why not make a local sport? How much goes into it and kind of how to get over that hurdle because the sport does involve a lot of interaction and kind of you need to know um, the ins and outs of it. And so to, to make that relevant to young people was probably the hardest thing we had to do, but I think we figured it out, so. And as you can see, um, all these words are represented in warm, inviting, and bright colors, which really represents um, the opportunity and excitement that we really want to portray with this sport. Um, for example, the bright red color that you see really represents the idea of um, a heart beating. So, because we not only want this sport to come alive more, but it also um, represents the significance of how unique this sport is because it's an actual living, breathing animal, so it really differentiates it from other sports. Offering more internships or experiences for students at Ohio State even to uh, command the social media. Um, digital signage at the track is an expensive investment, but working with the track operators to incorporate something like a jumbotron and interactive digital signage, especially uh, featuring stories in between races, and iPads uh, to increase the amount of iPads offered for customers to use at tracks. And we also want to say that our experience with harness racing has really opened our eyes to the beauty of the sport. It's something that I don't know if I would have had a chance to be a part of before this. It's grab life by the harness. This really encompasses everything we've talked about. The grab encompasses the customer segment that wants to control their own luck and really involve themselves in mastery. The life involves the other part of the customer that wants to get engagement at all angles and really enjoy their time there. Um, so bringing that all together, we have this logo. It's forward facing, like Isla talked about, because we want to involve the future. Um, it's sleek, slender lines, kind of are futuristic, um, reiterating that. And the color red kind of demonstrates what Jess was talking about, about the heart and passion. So where is harness racing when we make our decisions about what to do for fun? Why are all these things so much more popular? And why does it get lost in the crowd? Oh. Well, it has to do with what we call the consideration set and the evoke set. So our decision starts with um, con evaluating your consideration set. These are the things you actually consider when you're going out to do something fun. 
But in order to be in that consideration set, it has to be in what's called an evoked set. You actually have to think about it before you can even consider doing it. So that's where harness racing lacks. It's not something that comes to mind that can even be considered as a decision uh, for what to do in your free time. It's, people think it's rugged, you know, it's from the country. It appeals to an older demographic, male. Um, you know, guys go, they bet, they drink beer, and they watch sad horses race. Um, so we really want to change that. And Lauren is going to get into how we're going to do that. And the overarching goal that we came up with, and that was to engage Ohio residents with harness racing by rebranding it as a relevant form of entertainment. Keyword relevant. So in order to evaluate this overarching goal, we wanted to um, increase attendance, sales, and overall profits by 20%, and then also continuously increase engagement levels. This is the new logo that OHHA would stand behind, and it would kind of, it's kind of the main um, premise of our whole marketing plan. We're sporting it on our shirts. Um, and this is our tagline that goes along with it, which is bet on Ohio's original athletes. So another way to keep the audience informed um, of all these events coming up in the races is to have this map on their phone when they're on the go. It should be very consistent with the website, and this app is free to download, and it's going to be usable by all mobile devices. Um, as you can see on here, there's little icons for events, so they can pull it up and see all the events that are going to be going on. Um, there's a calendar, and then um, there's a map icon where you can go and um, click on it. It'll bring you directly to the track. And we also have a statistics icon, so we think that would be really, really great for those outcomers that we were talking about. Um, you know, people who um, want to study up. Oh, sorry. People who want to study up um, to see how they can increase their chances of winning at the races. And then these are going to be the associations that people are going to think of. Remember the slide with the um, older demographic and the sad horse? Well, this horse looks really happy, looks really athletic, right? So we want the people to think of it as a social experience and something that's thrilling and exciting. And they're going to say, hey guys, let's go to the track. Um, I will be blunt that it's a bit outdated. There's um, a lot of just unnecessary content. And usually when people come to your, your website, they already come with like a predetermined reason of what they want to come for. And so when you're redesigning a website, you want to think of the customer's view, viewing um, habits online. Typically, they like, you need to remember that they like short. They like short lines, short paragraphs, short captions. They like a light background with dark writing, because it's easier to see. They obviously love pictures. And so here's an example of what it could look like. Just kind of highlighting the key sections. We spoke with Kim Rinker, and she said that, that the majority of your visitors come for um, the baddest page, the, the gallery, the newsroom, um, the dates of the horse and, rack, horse and tracks, and um, also the um, marketplace as well. The first point, and the one that we thought most interesting, was that the participants felt that social media necessarily wouldn't bring in new customers, but more take on existing. And then the second point, which is kind of what we expected, is that young adults feel a lack of association with this sport. And then the third is that by creating unique connections to the target markets through school affiliations, that would help draw an interest. So such as like Ohio State sponsoring a horse, or contacting the Greek Life or the Equestrian Club and creating events with them. The concert with Cherokee. Um, we chose to put this on the 4th of July because the sport overall is an American tradition and this whatnot celebrates America. Um, so we chose the Rock and Race for Charity. We chose Rascal Flats here in the picture to host a charity concert. Um, but overall for this, we wanted to have a harness race, the concert, and then fireworks. Um, the tickets would be $85 for general admission and then $75 for students. This would cover the concert and a voucher. And then the voucher would be used to bet on the harness race so people don't have to actually use additional money um, to bet on it, which would kind of go into the non-for-profit part of it. Um, additionally, there would be drink specials all night long, and any of those money that, um, any of the profit that comes from drinks or additional bets would then be donated all to the charity. Um, so we put this on July 4th, as I had said, and we wanted to do it in 2015. Um, you need ample amount of time to find the artist, contact the agency, um, find a specific charity you want. Here we have Nationwide's Children's Hospital, um, just to kind of tie it more into the community and seem as if 
OHHA as part of the community within Columbus versus its own entity um, and build a relationship with the surrounding community. I looked at their website, gave them a call, and I even emailed one of the representatives from there. And every single channel, I got a different response. So I was trying to find out about the food options. Online, they say they have you know, a players club where um, the sports bar that you can eat at. I called Northfield Park. The guy told me you have to go to um, the Hard Rock Casino. He said you didn't even have dining options. And then when I emailed one of the representatives, he told me that you do have concession options, but not dining options. So um, just that right there, that um, not even the fact that the sport I didn't want to go to, I was interested in attending the race. But that lack of communication, that inconsistency in the communication left a bad taste in my mouth. So we really want to focus on, on creating synergy between not only the tracks, but the channels of information as well. We sat for a long time and we're like, this is so hard. We're working with this association. But we have four different tracks on four very different pages. So we're like, do we come up with a logo? Do we come up with a slogan? What is that actually going to do? And the more we thought about it, we're like, the brand is the experience. The brand is the experience you have at each track. So what we wanted to do is come up with a brand that encompassed that experience. We want the experience to be welcoming. We want people to feel comfortable attending a race any day of the week. We want it to be inclusive. We want something for everyone while they're there. This is mostly hits on the socioeconomic part, so all income levels are welcome. We believe that we can address two demographics that aren't currently being dressed and targeted, and that's the young better, which you've heard about before with the college. Um, young professional, it's 18 to 25. They're more deal-driven and look for an, entertain, uh, an entertainment side of it. And then the affluent better. This is someone who's making over $100,000. They want to be seen, and they want to be seen with their money. And they have the money and the free time to spend. So that's someone we definitely want, want to uh, invite or target. What we're envisioning is that maybe you and your coworkers want to go in and collectively sponsor this horse, own this horse together. You and your family can join. And so it's not just one person who's invested, but it just spreads the interest of the community. And so more people are loyal to the race that day. More people have a vested interest in how of the outcome of the race in attending. As a, a typical customer that we would expect to uh, attend to a harness racing event, meet Larry. As far as the current customer um, of harness racing, Larry embodies these characteristics. He's a baby boomer, um, a white male. He has strong ties to harness racing, as well as it was likely passed down from generation to generation, either his father or grandfather. He enjoys harness racing as a hobby, and he's willing to spend a whole day at the track. There's a technology gap for him as well, but he does love the sport no matter what. Now, let's meet his wife. <laughs> meet Laura. Laura is very similar to her hu um, husband in all respects, except for her reasoning to go to the track. She spends most of her time at the casino on the slot machines, instead of watching and betting on the races. As we said, Larry and Laura spend uh, much of their time very differently at the track. As you guys can see by these, um, these charts, it's even more um, significant that men spend more time um, betting and at the races than women. In order to reach and attract new customers, OHHA and the tracks have used different methods of promotion. So what we've talked about pre so far is what we consider Harness 1.0. And so what we want to do is take you guys to the 21st century and make it Harness 2.0, a new revised and new strong base behind it. Without further ado, this will be our new uh, branding efforts. As you guys can see, this um, really fits uh, with the current base that we're looking for. It's new, it's clean, it's, it's very um, streamlined, and that's something that we really wanted to bring to the table. So for every race being run that day, guests will choose a horse that they think is going to place first. So after every race is finished, Points will be allotted in accordance with the place that they finished in. And the goal is obviously to end with the lowest number of points in this case. So for example, you see there that for the first race, we in this case chose Bullseye as the winner. So if Bullseye did end up winning that race, that would be one point. However, if we were to make the mistake of choosing Pittsburgh as a winner for the eighth race, then they, and then they ended up placing 10th, that would result in 10 points, which would lower their score, or it would increase their score, which is a bad thing in this case. So the winner at the end of the um, whole race day with the lowest points will win a jackpot based on how many other people purchased the scorecards that day. One thing I learned is how, like, how much tradition there is to it. It's something that started in ancient Greece with chariot racing, and the fact that it's still around today shows that there's a tradition and family um, that family handing it down from generation to generation that's just really strong and something that 
is really special because you don't have that in a lot of sports. You know, some sports start in the 1900s, um, but here, you know, you have something that's gone on for centuries. First one is looking at the revenue, making sure that the attendance goes up and the spending. We had an idea where it was fantasy harness racing, um, so we would want to, um, people to really take advantage of that and spend more money while right off the bat coming into it. And then another thing is we really wanted to work on the website, we wanted to work on social media, and so really kind of driving that traffic, whether it's retweets on Twitter or it's Facebook likes, those are the big ways we want to discover those metrics. And then also we uh, talked about customer service and uh, the experience that customers get when working with people that work at the track. And so making sure that they have that constant ability to review the track owners and the, the track in general, and making sure those are positive reviews. You know, Yelp is something that's really, really prevalent. So we want those Yelp reviews to start going up and being really strong presence. Uh, we want to increase the brand awareness and uh, create a whole new uh, brand image. And we design a logo for you guys. I uh, hope you guys like it. And. Uh, uh, we created a video to show our concepts. is going to be different so somebody's gonna obviously wager less money than the others but and they can kind of do how they can wager how much they want and it would just be kind of be easier to bring them in the door and the reasons we think the harness racing can deliver is basically because of the high risk high reward concept the excitement of winning and every outcome is different and they only can they can only spend as much as they want to a good thing to do would be to create a Facebook US web page and a Twitter web page and you would do that at the beginning of the marketing plan. And the great thing about this is that it costs no money to do it. So um, to keep up with the page, so you can post things, um, events going on, new things that you want to share with people and raise more awareness, hire at least one or two um, interns, part-time college students, um, any internal editors as page moderators to keep up with it. And the objective here is to increase the awareness among the younger generation. What are some of those factors that would show that a plan would well, be I, successful? I think would increase live wagering at the racetrack, increase the attendance, uh, increase the new owners uh, into the sport, uh, things of that nature. You just saw all the presentations, and uh, what, what are some things that jumped out at you right now, I mean, gut reaction, before you decide who the winner is? I think the experience first time going to the track was it a good experience for the people you can get there the first time how do we get them back how do we retain them so we want them to have that really that good experience and I, I think you heard that three or four times there in their presentation um, going back to social media again the, uh, Facebook Twitter um, fantasy horse racing I thought that was one of the key things today was uh, type of wagering for uh, fantasy horse racing, you know, if the number of point. You know, if you bet on a horse in every race, you, you get one point if you win. So at the end of the night, there's ten races. If you have the fewest points, then you would win uh, the jackpot.